This is Nursing 622, Module 8. We're going to specifically talk about sexually transmitted diseases. Objectives to identify those STIs in both genders, the timing, appropriate communication tactics to discuss with your patients, and treatment and prognosis of these STIs. Introduction of the STIs. Um, you know, there's multiple different STDs every year. Um, common age is 15 to 25. Understanding that the rate of curable STDs is the highest in the U.S. This can be from bacteria, viruses, multiple other different etiologies. Transmission is by intimate contact. This can be oral, vaginal, anal. Remember, those are all possibilities. Common STDs in women, genital ulcers, you can have the chancroids, the herpes. Remember herpes, genital herpes is not curable, it's only treatable. Um, you know, and then multiple other STDs that can occur. Syphilis is by blood work. Getting those STD screenings with the HIV, hepatitis, and syphilis is important. Um, urethritis and cervicitis, what is the causative agent? What is the bacteria that is causing it? It can be chlamydia, it can be gonorrhea, it can be mucopurulent cervicitis. Why a pelvic exam with cultures is so important. Human papillomavirus, have they had the Gardasil treatment? Have they had abnormal pap smears? Have they had a positive HPV? Is there a family history of HPV? Looking at the vaginal discharge, bacterial vaginosis, we know, is a change in the pH of the vagina. This can very frequently happen after multiple encounters for sex. It can happen after antibiotics. It can happen with urinary tract infections. Multiple things can cause this. Trichomoniasis, again, doing that pelvic culture, taking a look, seeing what's going on, what's the exposure, and then candidiasis with the yeast. Diabetics are at higher risk. Previous use of antibiotics also puts you at increased risks. Vaccine preventable STDs, hepatitis B, hepatitis B, those of us who have been in healthcare know we've had the Hep B series, right? And then you can also screen with an acute hepatitis panel. Hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. These are all possibilities. When you're looking at doing screening for STDs, you wanna look at all of these factors. Parasitic, it is absolutely possible that it could be parasitic. Again, doing a pelvic exam, taking a look, seeing what's going on down there to see if you see anything moving and you need to use a comb and scrape it off and send it to be tested or if you have the experience to know. And then again, HIV, which is a blood test. Impact of STDs on women, um, cancer, you know, we have all of those reasons that we are concerned in the women population. Reproductive issues, untreated STDs can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease and ultimately infertility. It can cause a spontaneous abortion. We know urinary tract infections can cause premature labor and ultimately spontaneous abortion. abortion. Same thing. Tubal scarring, if they have recurrent STIs, and they have this chronic issue, they can have infertility issues secondary to tubal scarring and development of scar tissue. Pregnancy problems, it can cause ectopic pregnancies, preterm delivery, rupture of membranes, sepsis, ultimately postpartum infection. We do our screenings to see if they're strep B positive, if they need to have antibiotics when they're delivering. Again, this is why a pelvic exam to check for cultures is so important. Biological factors, the vaginal environment. Remember, with vaginal atrophy, you have an increased risk because it's dry down there. There can be more irritation, increased risk for infection. Is there trauma, increased exposure? What is their age? What is their gender? What are their sexual partners? Looking at those social factors, poverty, education, social inequality, developmental de delays, we see that oftentimes. And you have to really take a good history and see what's going on with these patients. Do they have access to health care? Have they been having this issue for a while and finally made the trek to go get checked out? Societal norms, 
safer sex practices. We talk about barrier methods using protection to decrease those high risk sexual practices. Education is the key here. Understanding the risk, the risk of your patient based on their age group, their poverty level, their risk factors, this is all very important. Specific populations that we talk about are incarcerated women as well as women who have sex with women. And again, be very careful with how you describe or label these patients. We need to make sure that we are open, we keep a positive mind, and we don't have a stigma towards them. Education, gender, cultural specific, literacy, uh, protective practices, counseling, talking about prevention. Prevention is the key. Making sure that you have that open discussion, they're comfortable talking with you about it. Safe sex, safe sex practices, abstaining from sex, or only one partner, or low, low risk partners, making sure you're using barrier methods, condoms. Are you on birth control to try to prevent pregnancy if you're having multiple partners? Health history is very important with the chief complaint, symptoms, if they've had any previous STDs, when they've had their period last, last time they were checked for STDs with HIV screening and blood work, physical examination, doing a pelvic, obtaining cultures, checking a urinalysis, making sure there's nothing else going on. Looking at those diagnostic tests, the pap smear, checking it was the HPV positive in the PALS. Wet mounts, gynecological uh, cultures, looking for Chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomoniasis, doing a syphilis test, hepatitis panel, a pregnancy test, looking for bacterial vaginosis, looking for candidiasis. And again, education is the key. And understanding if they test positive, they must notify their sexual partners. And the health department is also involved with this to help maintain and make sure that everyone is being treated who's been exposed or who has had a positive culture. Cervicitis, again, the purulent, milk purulent discharge, you can have some endocervical bleeding. Chlamydia, looking at our treatment plan, doxycycline is actually, actually more recommended now by the CDC than Zithromax. However, the Zithromax is a one-time dosing. Doxycycline is for seven days. Gonorrhea, you also treat with the antibiotics, and then pelvic inflammatory disease. Is there another causative agent that's causing it? Why do they have PID? Looking at your treatment plan, making sure that you have good and close follow-up. Ulcerative genital STD, syphilis, looking at the screening, the diagnosis, the fluorescent test. Again, if you're not comfortable with this, you refer them out to GYN, those people who specialize in this, and the ultimate treatment is penicillin G. Genital herpes we know is not curable, it's only treatable, we manage the symptoms. Understanding that is very important for the patient to know with any current partners and future partners, and we know that that acyclovir or valcyclovir with the Valtrex only just controls your signs and symptoms, we don't cure it. You can have chancroids, which are the painful genital ulcers. You need to do a urinalysis with a culture as well as a genital culture. And the treatment plan for this is Zithromax. Vaginal discharge, STDs, trichomoniasis, history and physical, doing the wet mount, sending off the cultures. And then ultimately, flagell is your treatment. And remember, with flagell, they cannot drink alcohol. Uh, while they're taking the medication or they will be sick with it. Bacterial vaginosis, again, is also seen on the wet mount. Flagell is the definitive diagnosis for this as well. Hepatitis A and hepatitis B are, again, lab testing that should be included with your STD monitoring. The prevalence of HIV has been pretty significant, undiagnosed in women. Um, the biggest thing you can do is educate, build that rapport with the patient, so then you can help them manage this. Once you've gone past a preventative stage, and if they have HIV, be there, be that resource for them to help them manage this. There are multiple HIV clinics and infectious disease facilities that help manage this. 
One in four women in the U.S. have this. It's increasing in those over the age of 50. You can see the breakdown of the population with the incidence. Mortality, third leading for African American. A lot of this is secondary to the disparities of health that we have seen. It's the sixth leading cause for all women, though, however. Disease progression, understanding how HIV works, how it targets and binds to the CD4 and T cells refer out to the specialist. You should have a basic understanding of this, but you should also know that they warrant further investigation and they need that specialist treatment. And then the stages of HIV. Is it an acute infection? Is it a latency? Do they have AIDS? Are you just monitoring their CD4 counts? Sexual activity. Again, discussing with patients about preventative me measures, barrier methods, Needle sharing, blood transfusions. Blood transfusions are less now. Our screening process is much better than it used to be. However, it's always still a possibility. And then you worry about if they're pregnant. What is the transmission that can happen in the uterus? <clears throat> is there transmission through breastfeeding? What is the recommendation? Have that referral process in place so then you can talk to the specialist yourself and refer them to where they need to be. Occupational needle stick, which is very, very uncommon. However, it is always a possibility. Factors facilitating the transmission is the viral load, the susceptibility. Remember, you have to have a host that's able to accept the virus and then the risk factors that we've talked about before. Biological risk factors is the presence of other STDs, the viral load, the sex roles, gender, ethnicity, age are your demographic, and then looking at those disparities of health with poverty, lack of education, those social interactions, those are very important. Prevention looks at pre-exposure prophylaxis, say for needle sticks or possibility if they've come in contact, HIV testing, follow up and again referring them out to those clinics and those specialties that are dealing with HIV patients on a daily basis. Counseling is important, treatment planning and as well as family planning. We look at the overview um, about beginning antiviral medications and things and again this is not something that you'll likely be implementing However, having an understanding of all of this is very important so you can discuss with the patients. Knowing that there's an opportunity for them to have a better quality of life by following up with these facilities that specialize in HIV. Goals is health and quality of life, right? We want them to have a good quality of life, prevent transmission, making sure that we decrease the amount of unwanted pregnancies and tetragenic effects. Also knowing that we want to protect the women and the fetus if they are pregnant. Looking at those incarcerated women, transgender women, these are your specialty populations that warrant further investigation and discussion. Again, your textbooks, readings, and uh, additional resources.